seemed like he was uh, ready to fight to the to the end. So, so where were we? How instinct kicked in, ready to run. Vice President Biden holding a secret meeting with one of the most powerful and influential members of his own party. Could it be a sign that he's ready to take on Hillary Clinton? Air scare, just one day after that deadly air show disaster where an aircraft plunged into a busy road, a pilot is killed during another air show. With aging aircraft and ever bigger crowds, are these shows getting too dangerous? And high speed confrontation. There she goes. The man who triggered a viral video by pulling over a woman driving erratically. Stop the car! The reason he chased her and didn't stop until she hit the brakes. From ABC News World Headquarters, this is ABC World News Tonight. And good evening. Thanks for joining us on this Sunday. I'm Tom Yamas. We begin tonight with those three American heroes who helped stop that attack on a train in France. There they are at the far end, Oregon National Guardsman Alex Scarlatos, friend Anthony Sadler, and Airman First Class Spencer Stone, accompanied by America's ambassador to France, now telling why and how they jumped into action, taking us inside their split-second decision to stop what they feared could have been a massacre. And we're also learning new details about that suspected terrorist, a 25-year-old Moroccan national already on a security watch list. We begin our coverage tonight with ABC's David Wright in Paris. Caught on camera, the immediate aftermath of this foiled attack on a train bound for Paris. He seemed like he was uh, ready to fight to the, to the end, so, so where were we? The gunman trussed up on the floor, hogtied with a conductor's red necktie. Beside him, his small arsenal of weapons. The American airman who stopped him, bloody and wounded, but immediately giving first aid to another passenger who had been shot. Airman First Class Spencer Stone now speaking for the first time. I was going to use my shirt at first, but I realized that wouldn't have worked. So I just stuck uh, two of my fingers in his the hole, found what I thought to be the artery, pushed down, and the bleeding stopped. French authorities say the quick action of all three Americans saved lives. We saw him cocking the AK-47, so at that time it was either do something or die. The guy had a lot of ammo. I mean. His intentions were pretty clear. Alec just hit me on the shoulder to say, let's go, and ran down, tackled him. We hit the ground. Alec came up and uh, grabbed the gun out of his hand while I put him in a chokehold. Uh, it seemed like he just kept pulling more weapons left and right, pulled out a handgun. Alec took that, uh, took out a box cutter, started uh, jabbing at me with that. French authorities have now identified the assailant as 25-year-old Ayoub El Kazani, born in Morocco. France had him on a security watch list after Spanish authorities told them he had ties to Islamic extremists. Authorities say he was armed with the AK-47, a Luger pistol, the box cutter, plus eight extra cartridges of ammo. But a lawyer who met with him told us he's not a terrorist, claiming El Kazani is a homeless man who was just planning to rob the train. It doesn't take eight magazines to rob a train. Tomorrow, the French president plans to thank them personally, awarding them the Legion of Honor, France's highest medal. Tom? An amazing honor. David Wright in Paris for us. David, thank you. Tonight, here at home, a new development in the 2016 presidential race concerning Vice President Joe Biden. He held a secret meeting with Senator Elizabeth Warren, one of the most powerful and outspoken Democrats. The question now is, is he getting ready to take on Hillary Clinton? ABC's Devin Dwyer has the latest. It's the summer of the political wild card. Tonight, Vice President Joe Biden is stirring up intrigue among Democrats after that secret political meeting with populist star Senator Elizabeth Warren. Welcome. Warren is an icon among liberals, an endorsement eagerly sought by all the Democratic presidential candidates. So far, she's been cool to frontrunner Hillary Clinton, telling WBZ Friday she thinks the race is wide open. I want to see all of the presidential candidates lay out where they stand on key issues. The meeting with Warren, whose stamp of approval could catapult Biden, is the strongest sign yet he's getting serious about the 2016 race. While Clinton vacations in the Hamptons, seen in this DailyMail.com photo, Biden's supporters see an opening in the polls. In a recent Quinnipiac poll, only 37 percent say they trust Hillary Clinton, while 58 percent say they'd trust Joe Biden. Biden also said to be privately grappling with the wishes of his late son, Beau, who recently died of cancer. I know Bo wanted his dad to be president. I know that he wanted that in 1988. He wanted that in 2008. Unbelievable! 
On the other side, frontrunner Donald Trump, once seen as a long shot, now showing staying power, shaking up the Republican field with his call to round up and deport millions of undocumented immigrants. I still don't hear specifics on how you're going to do this. Are you example? Well, you don't see my specifics, George, but my specifics are very simple. I'm going to get great people that know what they're doing, not a bunch of political hacks. Sources in both the Biden and Trump campaigns say what's energizing supporters for both candidates this summer can be summed up in one word, authenticity. Biden's expected to make his final decision on a run in the next six weeks. Tom? Devin Dwyer for us at the White House. Devin, thank you so much. Turning out to some relief both on the ground and from above in the fight against those devastating wildfires in the West. As hundreds of civilian volunteers answer the call for help from exhausted firefighters, ABC's Kenneth Gibson is on the front lines in Washington State tonight. Tonight, the Okanagan Complex wildfires in Washington growing to a staggering 374 square miles. Authorities fearing the return of extremely dry conditions and no rain in sight could make fighting those massive fires more difficult. And that atmospheric instability has a potential to affect all fires within the complex. Thousands of residents under evacuation orders. Mark Desdier rushing to save his lake house at the height of the fires caught in a firestorm. Instantly, it, a, it looked like I was in the middle of a napalm explosion. It was awful. The 59-year-old instinctively drives his quad bike into a lake, waiting out the flames for 35 minutes. What made you say, I have to go in the lake and that's my way of surviving this? I had no other choice. There was, it was the only thing I could think of to get out of flames. Battle-weary fire crews getting much-needed reinforcements. Dozens of firefighters from New Zealand and Australia now en route, along with hundreds of volunteers expected on the front lines within days. Everybody helps somebody out, whether you know them or not. The weekend weather conditions that allowed ground crews to make progress fighting the flames also dealt a setback. Low visibility prevented air tanker pilots from flying. Tom? Kendis Gibson for us tonight. Kendis, thank you. Let's bring in ABC senior meteorologist Rob Marciano for the other big weather headline. We've been watching the tropics. What's the latest with Danny? Well, once it was a major hurricane, Category 3 is really weakened, Tom. Take a look at the satellite imagery here. We do expect tropical storm force conditions across the northern Leeward Islands. Right now, 40 mile an hour winds expected to continue to diminish in strength. Might even not make it to uh, Cuba by the time this week is done. We're also watching two other disturbances in the Atlantic, one of which, the one right in the middle there, has got an 80% chance of becoming our next tropical system could become Tropical Storm Erica here in the next couple of days. And we're watching Tropical Depression Kilo, 600 miles south of Honolulu. Here's the latest forecast track expected to become at least a Category 1, maybe a Category 2, but at least for now, the forecast track keeps it away from the Hawaiian Islands, Tom. That's good news. Okay, Rob, thank you so much. Now to President Jimmy Carter, back behind the podium today to teach Sunday school class since he revealed that he's battling brain cancer. The Baptist church in his hometown of Plains, Georgia, was packed beyond capacity, drawing hundreds of the faithful from 17 states and three countries. Do we have any business this morning? <laughs> President Carter clearly enjoying that moment. Many in the crowd camped out overnight just to get a seat to hear the 90-year-old former president. Today's topic, love. Turning now to America's economy, many investors and ordinary Americans have been spending a weekend of worry over Friday's sell-off on Wall Street. The Dow dropping 530 points, its biggest drop in nearly four years. Is this a sign of something bigger? Joining us tonight is ABC's chief business and economics correspondent, Rebecca Jarvis. Rebecca, what's going on? Well, what we're seeing tonight at this very moment, Tom, is stocks are pointing to a lower day tomorrow. And Wall Street actually has a measure where they can track fear. It's called the volatility index, and that spiked to its highest level so far this year, which is typically a sign of more volatility to come. You know, some people watching their 401ks at the end of last week saw some numbers they didn't like. What should they do? It's not an answer anyone's going to love to hear, but for the vast majority of people, the answer is to stick it out. Those who stuck it out through the Great Recession actually did so much better than those who bailed. If you look at the historical numbers, people who bailed in 2009 on stocks lost half of their money. Those who stuck it out made it back in three years, and now they are significantly up. That's a great stat to know. Okay, Rebecca, thank you so much. Now, one group of Americans concerned more than ever about their finances is college students. With many students heading back to school this week, we're seeing new numbers that recent college grads are struggling under crippling debt and are defaulting on their loans in record numbers. And in some cases, it's affecting their parents' finances as well. Here now is ABC's Ty Hernandez. 
Tonight, as millions prepare for their college dream, a sobering reality. The number of graduates defaulting on their loan payments sharply rising. Maria Carillo got her degree, but not the job she wanted. Ten years later, Maria makes ten fifty an hour. I have to keep food on the table, so student loans really wasn't one of my priorities. Maria is not alone. The number of former students in default now up to nearly seven million, nearly a fifth of all borrowers. Financial away, advisor Lynette Calfani Cox on lessons repaying it her own happen. student loans. So unless you're okay with living with this for decade after decade after decade until you die, this is going to be a problem that lingers. Many of the students in this category of extreme default dropped out of school before earning that income boosting degree. And some of those who attempted a payment plan found it impossible to catch up with the spiraling interest. Whenever I got anything from the student loan place, it pretty much went to the garbage because I knew there wasn't any way I was going to be able to pay it. What are the consequences of defaulting? When you've defaulted on a student loan, that makes it much harder for you to do everything from rent an apartment, get a mortgage, um, secure an auto loan or a credit card, or even get a job because a lot of employers look at your credit rating in determining who to hire. Parents who co-sign these loans should also be aware they are equally responsible if their child defaults. So it's important to request a copy of all monthly statements. And after a period of time, you can ask for a co-signer release that will remove your name and liability from the loan. Good Tom? to know. Ty, thank you so much. Back to school maybe just around the corner, but the boys of summer are still out in force at stadiums and ballparks across America. But tonight, after yet another fan getting hit by a foul ball, even one of baseball's biggest stars is issuing an appeal to Major League Baseball. Here's ABC's Lindsey Janis. Ooh, back in the seats. In you can hurry. hear the reaction in the stands. Oh, Barely a second after the ball comes off the bat, it, it smacks a woman in the face. It. She was sitting behind the Detroit so Tigers dugout so Friday night. Really Paramedics really taking her to the hospital where she the spent the night. Now. For Tigers pitching superstar Justin Verlander, it was the last straw. It's something that needs to be addressed immediately. In July, Stephanie Wapensky also hit by a foul ball at Fenway Park in Boston. There was no reaction time. Part of a broken bat flying, striking another woman in the head at the same stadium in June. But in a sport obsessed with statistics, there isn't one for how many times fans get hurt. One study estimates that number is 1,750 every year. The most dangerous places to sit, often the most desirable and expensive, along the first and third baselines. In recent years, pro baseball bosses have resisted attempts by some fans to require stadiums to put up protective netting in those areas. The league saying catching a foul ball is all part of the fan experience. But tonight, telling ABC News they are evaluating a number of issues related to fan safety. Tom, a number of players have gone on the record saying they tell their wives and children to sit only in the safest spots like behind home plate and way up in the stands. Tom? Got some telling advice. Lindsay, thank you. Still ahead on World News tonight, a disastrous weekend at two air shows. Pilots killed after a plane went down in a ball of flames. Is this the thrill of, those, of these daredevil spectacles worth the risk? And later, a driver swerving across lanes of traffic. What another driver did next to get the person off the road while captured all on video while he felt the need to take action. ABC World News Tonight, brought to you by Aleve. When I started at the shelter, I noticed Benny right away. I just had to adopt him. He's older, Good boy. so he needs my help all day. When my back pain flared up, we both felt it. I took Tylenol at first, but I had to take six pills to get through the day. And my friend said, try a leave, just two pills all day. And now, here we go. I am back for my best bud. Aleve, all day strong. And try Aleve PM, now with an easy open cap. Allergy medicine not working? Try Nasacort. It relieves the worst nasal allergy symptoms, even congestion. Plus, it's non-addictive, scent and alcohol-free, and has no harsh taste. For 24-hour relief, Nasacort stops more of what makes you miserable. Introducing the first-ever gummy multivitamin from Centrum. A complete and tasty new way to support your energy, immunity, and metabolism like never before. Centrum Multi Gummies. See gummies in a whole new light.
you can help children all around the world grow up strong. Thanks to Walgreens' partnership with Vitamin Angels. When you get vitamins here, you change lives everywhere. Walgreens, at the corner of happy and healthy. My opioid pain medication makes me feel stopped up. Millions of people are estimated to suffer from opioid-induced constipation, OIC, caused by the opioids they use to manage chronic pain. OIC is a different type of constipation. Opioids block pain signals, but they can also block activity in the bowel. Finding relief has been a real struggle. Ready to paint a different picture? Definitely. Talk to your doctor about OIC and prescription treatment options. I can do that. Thanks to Gold Bond Powder Spray's fresh scent, I smell as good as I look. Is that even possible? Gold Bond Powder Spray cools and dries your body and leaves you with a fresh, clean scent all over. Stay cool with Gold Bond. Welcome back. Tonight, not one but two air show tragedies making headlines and leaving several people dead. And as many asking tonight, is this thrilling form of entertainment becoming too dangerous? For